Hey friends, Pastor Bill Walden here with Build Up the Church. God bless you. I hope you're doing super great. Devotional word for you today out of the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And this is a devotional for September 1st, 2024. 1 Corinthians 13, I'll tell you, is one of those summits of the, of the Bible. It's one of those high peaks, one of those elevated places uh, in Holy Scripture. And um, it's the love chapter. In chapters 12 and 14 of 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul is teaching uh, the Corinthians about spiritual gifts, about tongues and interpretation of tongues and word of knowledge and word of wisdom and gifts of healings and all that kind of thing. And they seem to have been exalting those gifts and, uh, and placing special prominence upon them. And seem, there's a kind of a tone of them feeling superior to one another depending on the gift that they've been given. The Apostle Paul explains in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, hey listen, we're all just part of one body. You might be a hand, you might be an ear, you might be a, a foot, you might be in uh, a mouth, but all the parts of the body are needed and God distributes those gifts as he will. In chapter 14 he goes into more depth on the gift of tongues and clarifying exactly what that is and what it isn't. But sandwiched in between those two teaching verses on gifts and kind of the technical look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit, he has this chapter about the primacy and the priority of, of love. It's a tremendous chapter. Uh, you know, easily a book could be written on the whole chapter, uh, imagining all the different applications and nuances of these biblical truths about love. But I want to focus in on just a few verses at the end of the chapter. Uh, the Apostle Paul has been talking about how gifts eventually, spiritual gifts eventually, are going to fade away. I, I believe they exist in all of the church age, as in, in this age as much as in the first century, because they are gifts that are used to build up the church and to edify Christians. Um, there are some who would say that the, the gifts, the supernatural type of gifts, passed away at the end of the apostolic age because they were needed in the first century to authenticate who the apostles were, but they're not needed anymore. Surely those gifts did authenticate uh, who the apostles were, but they weren't just for that. They were for the edification of the church, and the church still needs edification. And so I would disagree strongly with those who would say, that uh, the supernatural kind of gifts, uh, the spectacular gifts, if you will, ended at the end of the apostolic age. I think they're just as valid today as they were there on the day of Pentecost uh, because the church needs edification. The church continues to need to be built up, not only through the study and the preaching of God's word, but through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. And so I think those who would uh, say those gifts are not for today are really missing out and uh, they're not less saved or anything like that in my opinion I just think they're really missing out on an aspect of God's workings among his people certainly there are many abuses of the supernatural gifts and it may be kind of a um, knee-jerk reaction away from that when people say uh, no those gifts are not for today look at how those people are acting uh, we don't want to judge the truth of God's Word by the misuses and the abuses and, and, the, and the, the bad uh, performances uh, of those who would act carnally with the gifts of God. And so that's just a little bit of a side note. My main point for this devotional here is found in, um, well, we'll start at verse 11, 1 Corinthians verse 11. Paul says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. So children have limited understanding. They have a uh, great imaginations, those kinds of things. But Paul says, when I became a man, I put away childish things. I believe what Paul is saying here, you guys, you Corinthians are thinking childishly about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's time to grow up and see them for what they are, but to also see them for what they're not. He says, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. We see Jesus imperfectly in this life. We see him clearly in scripture, but there's going to be a time when what we see now compared to what we see when we see him face to face will be like looking in a dirty mirror or through a, an opaque window. We see him, and yet there's so much more to be seen, Jesus says. There's something better coming. 
Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. So we know Jesus, and yet we're going to really know him when we get to heaven. And then he says in verse 13, my, my target verse here, and now abide faith, hope, and love. These, th- these three wonderful pillars the Christian has in this life, faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest is love. Faith, the book of Hebrews tells us, is being sure of what you're hoping for and being certain of what you don't see. So faith believes that something exists, though we can't touch it, we can't feel it, we can't taste it, we can't put our hands on it. Faith is being sure that something is there. So we have faith in Jesus Christ. We see the evidence. Uh, We certainly have the internal witness of Jesus Christ within us, but it's not something I can't take you and say, here, put your hand on Jesus like I put my hand on Jesus. There's, There's an element of faith. Faith is believing that which is unseen. But faith is not going to be needed when we go to heaven because we're going to see him. We're not going to need to believe in heaven when we are in heaven. Right now we believe that there's a place called heaven. We have the internal witness of the Holy Spirit within us bearing witness to the Word of God, which is so strongly proven through archaeology, history, uh, literary examination, and all of those things. So we, we put all those things together, and we have faith that there's a man named Jesus, and there's a place called heaven. But when we leave this world, we're not going to need faith anymore, because we're going to see him even as we're seen. Hope is very similar. Hope is a confident expectation that something is coming. You know, when somebody you know, maybe buys a scratcher card and is playing the lottery, they say, I hope I win, you know, but they don't have a confident expectation. But the Christian, we have a confident expectation that we are going to see Jesus face to face and that we are going to walk those streets of gold in heaven. But when we're there, we're not going to need hope anymore. But what will continue on from this life to the next? Faith? No. Hope? No. As important as those are. Faith and hope are going to pass. We're not going to need them when we're in the presence of Jesus. What's going to continue there? Love. Love is the word that that, uh, is a descriptive word of God. The Bible says God is love. The Bible doesn't say God is faith. God doesn't need to have faith because he, he has himself. He doesn't need to have hope because he knows all things. But God is always love. And so faith will pass away. Hope will pass away. Faith and hope will lead us to heaven, but when we get there, we won't need faith and hope anymore, but we will continue on forever in love. How important love is. I encourage you, take a deep dive into 1 Corinthians 13. Study it. Uh, Cozy up with a cup of coffee and your favorite commentator and do a good study of that. You'll be blessed. So thanks for watching.